Hello everyone, my name is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric, and we are doing another video on the SM Vector Variable Frequency Drive, which is one of our most popular drives at our web store at precision-elect.com. We're not just distributors, we're integrators. We've used and installed these drives locally for over 30 years, and now we do it all nationwide. Um, we don't do field work nationwide, but we will support you. So today's video is going to cover the speed potentiometer. For those of you who don't know what a speed potentiometer is, it's basically like one of these knobs that you can turn to adjust your speed. And what we want to do is wire this knob. Oh, see, it's turning. <laughs> what we want to do is wire this knob to the drive so that we can adjust our speed up and down and uh, essentially use this instead of the keypad. They're very popular for most machines because most machines you don't want to have to open up a cabinet door and use the up and down arrows on the keypad every time you want to use it. Not to mention these are really nice if your operator's like trying to look at a machine and adjust the speed and they don't have to hold down a button or press a button, keep looking at it. This will allow them to kind of just eyeball it and turn it at the same time. It's another real popular reason people use these. Uh, the wiring for this is actually pretty easy. Um, all speed potentiometers have the same leads. In other words, you're going to connect the same amount of wires. You're going to connect three wires to it. But um, they're all a little different. So depending on the speed potentiometer you have, you may need, you'll, you will need to locate the actual location of each of these three sections we're going to cover. And uh, this is a standard three wire for a speed potentiometer. Uh, you can use three black wires. They don't have to be color coded. Uh, but typically, it's recommended to use color-coded because if somebody's troubleshooting the speed potentiometer, or the speed pot for short, uh, it's a lot easier if the color codes are, are matching where they're supposed to go. So black typically is wired to the common on your speed pot. Red is typically wired to the hot on your speed pot. And the white is typically wired to the signal of your speed pot. So this actually, the signal on this adjusts from 0 to 10 volts as you turn the knob. And that tells the drive what speed to go between that operating voltage. Now, if you want to pull up the manual, which I always recommend you have the manual, you can actually see the wiring of the speed pot right on page 21 of my manual. There may be a revision, so maybe plus or minus one page by the time you watch this video. But you'll see that there's a 2K to 10K wiring that shows terminal 2 as your common, Terminal 5 as your A in, or your analog input, so that's your signal wire, and then plus 10 volts, which is your hot. And that's how we're going to wire it. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that right now. This section right here on your drive is known as the terminal strip. And the first thing you need to know is anytime you're going to use this terminal strip, whether it's for start-stop control or for a speed pot in our case, you need to actually put a jumper between terminals 1 and 4. That's your drive enable. Without those two, you can never do anything with your terminal strip as far as actually starting, stopping, or changing the speed. It's a safety requirement. That's also a good place to wire a stop push button or maybe even an e-stop because once you actually open that connection, the drive's going to shut off no matter what you're doing. Now, as I said before, we're going to use terminals 2, 5, and 6. In the manual, terminal 2 is my common, and as I said earlier, we use black for the common. So I'm going to go ahead and put black into terminal 2. It's a small wire, sometimes it got to get wiggled in there, and then we tighten it. Don't over tighten it because you can actually uh, strip out the screws, which is never good. Uh, the second wire is actually terminal 5, and that is actually in the manual the signal wire. And we said before our white wire is our signal wire. So let me go ahead and get that in there and wire that as well. Sometimes you got to twist the wire to make sure it's nice and small so that it fits. There we go. And then again, tighten it, but not too much. All right, now for the last wire, it is actually terminal six, and that is our hot wire, and we're gonna use the red. Get that in there. Here we go. Tighten it. There we go, and pull on them a little bit, tug on them just to make sure they're tight. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to the wiring portion of it. After we do the wiring, then we have to change one parameter, and that's up here at the keypad. And in order to bring up our parameters, we have to press this M button. And we gotta go to P101, 
and press the M button again. And by default, it's set to look at the keypad, which is zero, zero for our speed. And we're actually gonna tell it instead to look at terminal, our terminal strip or our speed pot, which is zero to 10 volts and press M. And that basically tells the drive, look at our terminal strip for our speed instead of the keypad. Once you set that setting, then uh, it actually will not run, the up and down arrow keys will not work anymore for running your drive. Now, after you've wired it, essentially, that's it. We can go right back over to our power and turn it on, which mine was already turned on when I was wiring it, which is usually not something you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you completely cut off all your input power to the drive before you do any wiring. Um, I was mostly doing that just for demonstration purposes. But uh, after that, we can just use our standard start-stop control, which right now mine's set up for the keypad, and I press the start button. Since my speed's at zero, it's not doing anything. Um, but now if I try to use the arrows here to do my speed, I get an ERR message, which means error, because it's no longer worth looking at the keypad in order to turn on my speed or turn up my speed. Now it's looking at the speed pod. So turning up my speed now is just a matter of turning the knob. And it does follow me pretty close because my acceleration and deceleration times are really, really fast. So I can actually extend those out. In other words, if this is speeding up or slowing down too fast, I can actually go in there and adjust parameters 104 and 105 to extend that out if I wanted to take more time between my speeds. Um, but these are great. Like I said uh, earlier in the video, if like your operator's looking at a piece of equipment and they're trying to slowly adjust it, they don't need to worry about pressing a button they can kind of dial it in right where they want it and uh, kind of say, all right, we're good to go. So that's pretty much all there is to this video. Um, that's how you wire a speed potentiometer to the SM vector variable frequency drive. Remember, we sell all of these drives as well as motors now actually at our site. And uh, all of our price includes technical support. We are integrators, like I said, so we've been doing this a long time. Uh, so don't hesitate to call. We'll be more than happy to help out.